Hi guys! So today was a bit of a mission to try and get this all set up. Um, I would love to have a little cozy corner one of these days, but um, yeah, we're, we're moving on this point. We're going to be creating like a studio um, environment. But today I wanted to work on the art commission piece, which is similar to um, dogs playing. Hope you guys can hear me now. But yeah, so it took me a while to set this up. Um, I literally took, I think we, we got home at like half past six um, this evening and it literally took me like half an hour to figure out how to set this up and I was like half seven already. So <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I've even got my, my little chihuahua. Narnia sitting with me today. Say hi, Nani. Look, camera's that way. <laughs> See? Yeah, so we got a cozy little corner. And we're going to be doing our art commission, which is, uh, like I said, dogs playing poker. But it has like a twist because it was um, obviously like these four or well, five dogs basically playing poker. Um, and these five dogs are the client's uh, dogs that he had in his lifetime. So he obviously wanted an oil painting sort of to show that. Um, and what I've done is just basically drew a rough sketch. Good grammar and spelling. Uh, no, we do not want to listen to adverts. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just needed to make like a rough sketch of the dogs playing poker with with his dogs that he gave me photographs. Um, and the whole point is um, this is going to be like an oil, which I kind of made the stuff up first of not actually putting um, acrylic paint on my canvas first, like prep it, because the first thing you got to do with oil paintings is actually to prep it. So what I'm doing is a kind of you know, not lose the progress that I've already made, I am going to be taking it in like permanent marker and I'm drawing over the lines I've already made and adding a couple of like changes because obviously when I put acrylic over it, it's going to be a little bit see-through and it makes it more like smooth uh, for the, the oil paints. So that's pretty much like the first phase of painting oil. The next part of like oil painting is actually like literally getting into the oil painting. Um, so you have to like prep your canvas first things first um, and then what you actually are supposed to do is first prep the canvas by like painting over it with acrylic and then taking a pen to draw what you need it to draw. Uh, I kind of messed it up and did it the other way around but that's fine because you can take a permanent marker and you can fix it. So pretty much what we're doing today. Chloe Diamond, I have three positive things I want to say, which I say randomly throughout the stream. Dive into the photo. Um, so obviously I've got like a toy palm cross Maltese slash poodle kind of dog. Um, and he's like, has a cigarette, um, it is poor. Um, then this is supposed to be a toy palm. And she has like these diamond necklaces and she has like one of those Corella de Ville kind of very like long cigarettes that's, you know, the French bourgeois kind of, you know, modiste, fashionable French people wear. Or at least that's what I perceive the dog as, her personality. And then this is a chihuahua, which is a long-haired chihuahua. She has a crown on her because she was considered a princess to the guy who owned her. Um, and she literally had the personality of a princess. 
Um, next we have this guy, which is, um, I think he is like a cross between a beagle and a sausage dog. And he's got very like old, like droopy eyes and like a droopy jowl. So he's like a very old, ancient doggy. Um, so that's what I kind of portrayed him with like a cigar in his mouth. And then this guy is like the poncho. This is the big, the big guy. So he was apparently a golden lab. Uh, he was a Labrador, but he was a black Labrador, pure black. Um, so he's he has like a tux and he has like. Uh, kind of, I th I'm thinking of either a glasses, like, or a monocle, but I'm probably gonna put like a, a monocle on this beagle and having him having like a monocle on the side, but he's gonna have glasses because he owns this library or the study that they're in. Because you can see like library, like books in the background. And then these two are going to be paintings of like, one will be like a racehorse, the other will be like a beautiful scenery. And they're sitting at a table with like poker chips and cards and money and um, whiskey and martinis. So uh, I'm actually, I can't wait to see what this comes out as. Claire Diamonds, I say it first. It's hard to always be nice, but it's hard harder to get hate. So be as nice as possible because otherwise you get more hate back. That's actually quite true. I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the principle of if you point one finger, well, let me use this finger. If you point one finger, three fingers are pointing back at you. Um, so it's basically the thrice principle. Anything that you say nasty about someone, karma will come back to haunt you three times as worse. So you're right, Chloe Diamond, it's always it's better to be nicer to people than to actually be haters. Um, usually haters come from a place where they've been abused or hurt. So it's kind of a journey that they go through themselves and you shouldn't really take anything that they say to heart because they're just projecting their anger and their hatred out from you. So you shouldn't really take it too personally. Uh, Chloe Diamond, vegan teacher. No friends because she bullies people. I mean, maybe she shouldn't be a teacher, but anyway. Okay, so let's dive in. Okay, you probably won't be able to see me a little bit on the camera because I'll be focusing. But I'm probably gonna start with the back of this guy's chair. Around. Obviously, when I paint over this with oils, hardly, like you're not gonna be able to see this. I hate that vegan teacher. We're gonna end up having to buy another cookie. Where are my other permanent markers? 
Mm, I need to find some more permanent lacquers. I always have like my stationary box like with me or just in case. permanent markers because unfortunately when you're putting permanent marker on like something like um, a canvas like a painting canvas it doesn't really work well because the ink dries out really fast so let's see oh my god adverts <sighs> okay wait let's actually find this one Hopefully there are no adverts. But yeah, adverts. Oof. Hey there, Elisa. Welcome, welcome to the chat. <laughs> Code Diamond. The vegan teacher scald Gordon Ramsay for making a cookie book. Why? Why would he? Why would she scald him for that? Okay, cool. So just to come out a little bit better. Already getting like pins and needles. Obviously, these things don't have to necessarily be so accurate because when I'm painting it, the oil is quite thick that it actually will take away the most of the permanent marker. Okay, um, I wish I had my art box to show you guys what equipment I'll be using, but we will wait for the next stream when we do start doing oils. Lana, search her on YouTube and you'll understand. She said, book is a murder book. Um, okay. Usually I don't like YouTube and kind of stuff like that, like negative stuff. I mean, li literally, if it's useful to me and I find it actually influences my life, then I'll watch something like that, but at the moment, that sort of hatred, it does not benefit my life in any way, so I don't spend my time on people hating other people, if you know what I mean. I, I'd rather spend my, my time um, efficiently doing stuff that actually benefit myself, benefit my life, and brings in positivity into my life because I I don't like negativity. I mean literally when Skippy puts on the news, I, I hate it so much because I don't want to listen to politics. I really don't. Like I just wanna, you know, spend my happy days because I mean guys, life is so short. You you need to understand that life is it'll be gone in a flash. So you should enjoy your life while you still can. Like enjoy every minute, every moment, because I promise you, life will disappear very, very quickly. So why waste your time on listening to people hate other people for their accomplishments? I don't understand it. Her diamond. She's funny because um, she sings for the McDonald's song, so they make the any video. Uh, um, Lana.
Anna, she's a vegan who teaches people about veganism and pushes it on other people. So she, I guess she's the stereotype that's like, uh, how do you know someone is vegan? They will tell you. <laughs> I have one friend like that. She will literally tell you that she's a vegan. She come, like she once came to a bride, she's like, oh, by the way, I'm vegan. We didn't even ask, oh, but I'm vegan. We're like, okay, we'll have a separate bride for you and everything. Yes, because I'm vegan. Aren't you the first time? <laughs> is curving that way. more facing towards us even though he's kind of looking that way. Obviously like this painting that I'm making is not quite like a, like a realistic. It's very um how should I put it? Um it's it's same. It's like a hybrid, basically. I mean, when you are doing art, um, you can uh, either be a realist or I think um, ah, uh, what are the other type of painters? Oh, they call the end. Ah, oh, there's different like different types. Some some paint very realistically. Others paint very um, kind of like Picasso or. Um, oh gosh, I'm forgetting my artists already, going blank. What's his name again? Hmm. Good grief, all the artists' names are literally like flying out my head. But yeah, there's, there's different ways and different methods to painting, but some people feel more comfortable being realistic, others prefer being like more um, creative. Basically, art is all about having a creative license. Okay. Most of this part, like underneath here, is all going to be kind of painted black. <clears throat> oh yeah, Chloe Diamond, the most important um, positive one that I wrote is always believe in yourself. Yes, always believe in yourself even when it's hard to. Never lose. I 
Honestly, I don't know why I'm drawing the back of this, because it's not even going to show up. So these chairs. It's down here. Like so. I'll just draw the chairs in anyway, because paint them a little bit with oils, but they will be mostly black anyway. You guys can actually see the colors, but anyway. Hi. Hi. Please don't knock over the thing. I'm not going to. Uh, yeah, I had to be very ingenious on in how I actually did this. It took me about like an hour and a half to figure out how to do this. <laughs> but it's working. It seems to be working quite well. Well. Yeah, but unfortunately this camera isn't so good like the old Logitech one because... Uh, it's from the 90s. Uh, yeah, true. <laughs> I think it's from 2006, not the 90s, but still 2006. It's doing pretty well. Like, for something that's that old. Old tech. Yeah. probably won't be able to see what I'm doing at the bottom of the cable. But it's kind of like very curly wood. Um, this particular it kind of looks like a seashell. I don't know. Um Okay that's the bottom part of it. I feel like both of these pins are going like really dry. Chloe Diamond, at first you thought the dogs were space dogs. Well, I mean, especially this one, because the way <laughs> the way I drew it to kind of place them was I first like did a squeaky like line here, a squeaky line there, a squeaky line here, kind of until I could figure out how to shape the pants. Okay, so let's share. An old rocking chair. An old rocking chair for a very old dog. Tomorrow, even though I'm not streaming, I will be, well, I'm going to attempt to try and make recordings. Because um, I'm going over to Abby's house tomorrow and we're going to be trying to do um, Harry Potter, like playing all the old Harry Potter games. So that, that will be like really, really fun. Yeah, playing all the old Harry Potter games on PC, well on her PC, because my one isn't Vista, my one's like Windows 10, so um, unfortunately like games from the early 2000s will not work on new tech. <sighs> and yeah, I spent the better half of today making these things. They're wontons. I literally watched a video on TikTok on how to make them, and I made them today for the first time, and I'm actually pretty proud of myself. Hmm. Oh, Diamond, you saw five positive things. <laughs> There's more and more. I'm happy you're so positive. I'm very, very glad for, pleased for that. Keep all the positivity flowing. Hmm. 
Okay. this Labrador's form. I'm kind of thinking this, um, there's a certain part here, you wouldn't be able to see it, but, um, this, there's like a pipe coming out of the Labrador's paw, and it's like, like one of those old sort of things I can jot on here. So actually that's what I'm supposed to do. Like one of these old pipes. <clears throat> See one of those weird old pipes, <clears throat> but upside down. Obviously when I paint over it, it's going to look a lot better. Not all of the crap just falls on the table. I'm positive. I think I'm so damn positive. <laughs> uh, hey there, Chris. Welcome, welcome. Crow Diamond, I have a book that inspires me by just looking at it. The book suddenly makes me feel very positive. Oh, you must show us what that book is on Discord. I want to see what that book is. I feel, I feel like all of us can actually have positivity in our life. Especially during these trying times. So nostalgic playing that game. Obviously, with these dogs, I'm gonna make them quite furry. Chris, I'm craving chocolate. <laughs> you can't have, you must only eat healthy. You know, you're actually like, I don't know how you've done it because I, I crave chocolate. I live for chocolate every single day. Um, so I honestly don't know how you manage this. Mm. You won't ever see me quit. <laughs> Bow tie. I have a color. 
It's a very, very small dog gentleman. Here we go, there's a suit. All of its tucks. I wonder if they actually make these type of outfits for male dogs. Baxter's looking quite the gentleman. Yeah, that's that's his name. Baxter. Very, very beautiful lab. Here we go with the little puppy ear. Um let's just drop his head. Um he's got that's a bit of a duck. Down to his nose. Nose. His jowls. There you go. Look at that. glasses. His reading glasses. Just like his old dad. Reading glasses as well. used to have like these furred brows. That's his eye. There we go. Good old boy. we kind of have a smart looking lab in a tuxedo yep okay next up maybe we should do snoopy oh wait what one thing he does hold and has pull I don't know how he manages to hold this in his paw, but I guess it's up against the table. somehow figure out how to paint that on with oil, which is gonna be hard. Claire Diamond, I have a weird thing now. The worst thing that life has done is give snakes the ability to eat themselves. Snakes can eat themselves? Where did you see that? Like, is it, like, do they, do they just, like, grab their tail and then slowly eat themselves? Oof. God, I, I literally couldn't stand snakes, but now I definitely can't stand snakes. Um... Okay, let's draw the fat old Snoopy. Good. Oh, good lad. Good lad. The good old fat Snoopy.
Chris, um, I think I'm developing a post-nasal trip. I need happy food to comfort me. Give me ramen, please. Uh, okay, would you would you like me to uh, organize Uber to deliver to you, or um, should should we should I send Chef Skippy over to to your your place and just cook you some ramen? I think I think that's an order. Shame, dude. Are you are you starting to get the snuffles already? Lana, why are you tired? There will be no tired here. Be energized. I literally was up until like 3 a.m. Um, doing a copyright application. So like, if anyone's tired, it should be me, because I was up until 3 in the morning. Uh, Clo Diamond. They eat a mouse, for example. They can... Then they can regard their tail as eating through the movements, so they eat themselves and they simply die. Isn't that because they mistakenly eat their self? <laughs> Chris, can you send it via a mail? It's a pity we don't have such things as like those drones like they have in Australia where you can just like do any of these DHL deliveries with drones because otherwise, you know, could have done that, could have done that. Lana, you've been animating all day. Oof. Gets addictive, hey? Um, a simple dragon flying animation cycle. I'm glad you are practicing. So, how, how is the animation going? And, and how are your landscape thing going? Like, going? How's that going? Cuban cigar. Somewhat of a Winston Churchill kind of dog. <laughs> table is like the trickiest part of this entire operation. I'm trying to get the table to be remotely accurate. But it's fine, when you're painting things can be a little bit different. Uh, Clo Diamond, they still eat themselves. Um, I have a feeling that snakes aren't really clever. Lana, and it took so long because I had to figure out the tail movement. Did you have to watch videos for the tail movement? I know it's very difficult to do animations for animals that are extinct because you can't really have any lots of references for them. The wave principle. <laughs> that must have been fun, Lana. Uh, Chris, my fave quick ramen noodles are Nissen. And nowhere has them. Last time I branches out the noodles were yuck. Any suggestions? Or oh, last time you branched out the noodles were yuck. Any suggestions? Okay, well, so Skippy kind of makes me the classic um, ramen noodles. We, we usually get udon noodles. Um, so, like, if you go to... I know, I, I know the best place to actually go to buy, like, you know, these Asian noodles is actually to, like, Kokoro, that Korean... Um, um, that Korean 
shopping little tiny shop, basically. Um, but most of the noodles that they do have, surprisingly for Korean, it's not actually that, that great. So I go to Willy's and I just try to find like udon noodles, but like it doesn't even have to be expensive, but like egg udon noodles are the best for your ramen. And then what you do is like with our, our pork, we kind of like slow cook it. So like you have to in the morning, um, like kind of make the, the sauce, like a miso soup type of sauce. And when you're making the ramen, we kind of create a, um, a sauce first and then we base the pork in that. And then you have to like really slow cook the pork and pok choy, um, spring onion. Cause I mean like most of, like the ramen that Skippy usually makes for me is like a miso soup ramen. Tofu is also very nice. Like if you don't want to have pork, you can have tofu instead because tofu is actually high contact protein. So if you want to branch out with that, then I mean, that could be an idea. I <laughs> got diamond. Did you know that octopuses also eat themselves? You're obsessed with finding out animals that eat themselves, eh? Ugh. I can't actually imagine how an octopus would eat itself. Actually, find some recipes for you, um, Chris, for ramen. I don't know. Can you make yourself some nice ramen? <laughs> tofu could go jump. I'll definitely stick with pork. You'd be surprised how actually tofu tastes really, really nice. Um, Skippy took me to Jaffa, that's authentic Japanese restaurant in Rivonia, and. I had the miso ramen and I thought I was going to get the classic like, you know, soft boiled egg split in half with like, you know, lovely um, boiled pork, like softly boiled pork. I thought I was going to get all that. In, in, in actual fact, I ended up getting spring onion, like a proper miso soup with all the vegetables and stuff. But instead of having like the pork and the egg, which I thought was supposed to come with all ramen, but like apparently not. I ended up with like, it looked like mitts, but it was actually tofu. And actually it tasted just as good as pork, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Uh, Chloe Diamond, I saw a movie that they had different nature tips and was looking, and was there for another nature thing. Um, was, I mean, I don't know if you've watched on Netflix, it's like this new nature video, it's called Colourful Things. I've also, like I've been watching that, it's quite interesting. It teaches you about all the different camouflages of nature and, and so on. That's, it's quite fascinating. circles on the end of this table. Ooh. 
the more interesting things you put on your surrounding environments, the more hyper-realistic it becomes. I'm gonna try to make these dogs look very human and animated. Because behind closed doors, you never know what your dog or I was actually doing. Chris, I can kind of imagine your dog doing something like this, playing poker with all of his friends. <laughs> he just, he's, he seems to have that face about him. How's he doing, by the way? Have you been managing to take him on any, like, lovely walks or anything at the moment? be a little bit more raised. gonna have like a diamond necklace as well because she's like a precious little uh, chihuahua. Chloe Diamond, I'm watching uh, What Up on YouTube. They have so many things of nature. Did you know that there's a creature that can handle any animal from cheetahs to rabbits? What creature can handle any animal? I also know that leopards, it's very rare to see leopards because um, they don't really like human contact. Also, I, I learned something about like, if you go for a nature ride in, in the felt, like wildlife, to see like, um, I forgot what place it's called, but it literally, you can go on horseback to go see all these like animals, like the big five, and you can literally take your horse into a lion's den. And lions won't attack the horses because they really, they don't understand what is on the horse's back. It like freaks them out, so they think that it's more deadly than they really are, so they won't attack you or the horse while you're on its back. And the minute you get off its back, that's when it actually will attack. So they do say that if you ever see a lion while you're riding, do not get off your horse. But I mean, only South Africans would actually know that. Or people from Africa. So if you guys ever come to South Africa or any African countries, 
and you go for rides, just ask the tour guide about why it would be safe to take a horse in to the lion den area. Here is the martini. It's gonna be drinking like I don't know beer or something or like a cider. Imagine him drinking something to do with like a cider. Okay, let's draw the big queen's chair or throne, as they would say. I mean, she has quite a small dog, and she gets like the biggest seats. <laughs> That's usually what happens, especially if you own a chihuahua. It's just like. You know that the child's going to be taking it over your bed. It's like last night. Um, I was busy playing the new game that just came out called Scavengers. And I don't know why, but Nani got freaked out and she literally went like to hide under my bed, which she only ever does if I play horror games. Um, so we basically slept with my dog in the bed last night. <laughs> Which is quite nice for a change, because Skippy doesn't usually allow the dog to sleep in the bed. Whew, okay. So it is only token chips with those cards facing downwards. And then maybe like a bag of money. There you go, the bag of money. Sorry, Diamond, you forgot the name and going to look up the video. Okay, yes, please. I would actually really love to know what that um, animal is. I wonder if they have it in South Africa. Oh my good gracious me. This position's not exactly great for the legs. That's us abstract. This is going to be a very realistic abstract. Um, painting of the dogs. Diddy with all of her chips. 
and then Snoopy with all of his chips. And I'm guessing that he really laid down his cards because I put them already in order here. So you obviously fold. Or maybe he laid out his cards already. Maybe the one card he had was an ace. difficult to try and get as abstract as possible with these type of paintings. I mean the whole point of this painting was to be as cartoonish as possible. Whiskey on the rocks. Who good old Baxter? Cool. And then we have the chips all laid down here. To paintings like this, you always have to like um, give a good attention to detail. Because even though it is abstract, it still has to have some form of realism, like the angles of everything. Which... Yeah. Lana, I like the picture already. Thank you. It's getting there. I hope that uh, the client actually likes this. It's quite cute. Okay, now we just need to do the one last dog and then we can look at the background. We need to do his jowls. Oh, good gosh. I kind of made the chihuahua really fat because in real life she actually was a really fat chihuahua. <laughs> Okay, this is a little princess. It's giving a good smirk. Pomeranian, she was quite fluffy.
quite a fluffy dog. Basically, it was a big fluff ball. We get all the fluff ball family in here. Okay, now Chloe Diamond, the most important human is not yourself but your friends. Mm, I disagree with that statement, Chloe Diamond. The most important person is actually you before your friends because you have to put yourself first. If something is harmful to yourself, you think about yourself first. You don't want to constantly put your put your friends before yourself if for example uh they need if you need to urgently get back home because you need to feed your animals um or you actually need to get to some sleep because you have a big interview the next day or a big project you didn't finish and your friends like oh don't you just want to drop me off at this mall and come shopping with me you would be like yeah sure and you just end up going to the mall just to keep your friend company no you put yourself first and you say sorry i've got a big assignment or an interview to tomorrow i will come hang out with you on another day so always remember that yes friends are great and, and everything but you have to put yourself first sometimes because the most important person is yourself because in the end you have to be okay with you you do not have to think, what if my friends don't like me? Doesn't matter. What if you don't like you? You have to like yourself. And once you like yourself, then most of your, like you'll, you'll meet friends who will like you for you too. I think I'm done with most of these dogs. Now let us do the room. Okay, so this is obviously curtain rails. Okay, the curtain is going to have a bit more detail to it. Um, if your friend is in need, then your friend is important, Kodan. Yep, I agree. If 
your friend does need help, then of course you should actually go help your friend. As long as you don't put yourself in any huge harm, though. So another point to remember. Try give some gold to these books as well. Actually, these books are probably the collector's items. Doesn't matter because obviously I'm gonna be fixing this. Um. Yeah, so I'm gonna be going over it in oil. There. And we have now a beautiful masterpiece. See? And it's gonna look really cool when you can have like color in it too. Lana, can you make me a drawing suit? Lana likes your art style a lot. Lana, I will gladly make you a traditional art piece. Um, but unfortunately, 
oil paintings are really expensive like because of all the equipment I used so if you ask me to do an art commission via oil I can paint you but then they're also going to be like postal postage is going to be involved in that too um, but on Patreon itself you can actually if you like donate a certain amount of Patreon I think it's like five dollars you get like two coloring pages and those coloring pages are like arts basically of my work so I would be able to make these tiny art pieces and then I'll put them on my Patreon so if you want these type of artwork then you know there's that option on Patreon there's the option of like commission art pieces like digital but unfortunately art um it takes time out of my schedule so and it takes money so art you have to understand it's a touchy subject you don't do things for free um so if you want to support me and you know like gladly i will make you an art piece but unfortunately stuff like this is for people who pay me a certain amount and then i will paint them something like this type of style um, because I have to feed myself, I have to feed my horses, I have to feed my dog. Um, but yeah, maybe in the future then I will gladly paint you a beautiful, magnificent oil piece. Chloe Diamond, when is Skippy going to play SSO? <laughs> I actually literally got a photo of him playing SSO, it was so funny. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if he's ever gonna play SSO to be honest, like I don't think it's his jam. Um, I'll try to see if maybe on my year anniversary of streaming, maybe I could get him to play SSO in my stead and see how he does. He can stream Star Stable for me for that day. Um, what do you do with a certain number of viewers or followers? I don't actually know, but I mean it could be interesting like trying to get him to do it. Maybe on, uh, when I'm doing like a particular, uh, like I said, my, my year anniversary of streaming, like that could potentially be a lot of fun um but yeah guys so this is the magnificent art piece finally well sort of there like i said what i'm gonna be doing now is i have to layer this whole entire piece with like um sort of like an acrylic um uh Chloe Diamond, i want to see can you send the photo to discord Okay, can you just remind me on Discord to send a photo and just tell me what photo you want me to send on Discord and I, I will do that, Claude Um, But yeah, so... Like I said, I'm gonna paint this over with a... Um, it's kind of like a prep... Um, prep paint. You literally take a... Um, like, you know, like a paintbrush? You literally like take a paintbrush on a wall to paint the wall. You take that and you go over it in that sort of prep acrylic paint to make it smoother because right now it's quite rough. I mean, it took a lot out of three of these markers. So you can imagine how rough it'll be. So you wouldn't want to put oil painting on that. Um, so once the prep is dry and obviously then all the permanent marker would come through the white paint. Once it's dry, then it's ready to actually go with oils. And when you're working with oils, it's quite oily <laughs> I mean it's oils so you want you want to make sure that you mix the colors um, and you use up that entire like oil like like what I usually like to have this special sort of um, it's kind of a palette but it's like a uh, you can literally put the paint on it, the oil paint on it, um, and then wrap the palette up, like fold it over and put it in the freezer um, of your fridge. And that way you will never um, uh, waste oil because sometimes you put too much oil on your palette and it actually might be a bit too much. And oils are really, really expensive. So what you want to do is, you know, you know, you save as much oil as possible. So you would put it away into the freezer to save. And the next time you could bring it out and let it defrost or... I mean, oils will never actually freeze properly. Like if it's a big blob, then it won't freeze. If it's like a thin, you know, layer, it'll crust over and it'll freeze. And um, yeah, so 
that's one of the methods I, I save my paints is um, I put them in the freezer for the next time I use them. Um, and yeah, then we'll go over everything in, in oils. Um, I will try to do it here, but obviously I'm going to lay everything out with like, I don't know, newspaper to prevent myself from messing. But the first uh, thing we need to tackle when we're doing oils is we're first going to do the background. So if we can able to do the background, leave out the dogs, I'll probably end up maybe putting like sticky tape on like the outskirts of like the dogs, the shapes and everything like that to sort of leave it. Here at the bottom, I'm probably going to make it very dark because you want the background to be dark and you want the bottom part here, this empty space to be dark. You don't want empty spaces in, in your, your paintings. You want this to be the center focus. And it'll be cool to have like a library because then this will be colorful. You could have like different sort of landscapes. Um, you could have like also here different landscapes. Kind of what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make a painting of like a park, the dog's favorite park. And then over there is probably going to be like, I don't know, a racehorse painting. Like, you know, one of those 1800s and early 1900s racehorses with the, the owner standing there with the breeder with the horse and the jockey on top or something like that. Um, and then the, the back, the walls will be like a dark, dark red because it's a study. I mean, you kind of want to feel like a warm glow to it. Um, so yeah, and then these guys will be brighter colors. Their chairs will be like dark Mahogany. The table will be dark mahogany but like green on the velvet part here with everything on top um, because these guys are the same to focus and then obviously also what they're doing on the table because that's the whole point. It's literally dogs playing poker. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. I've got like a couple of months. Um, he doesn't want the painting like he doesn't mind if I if I give the painting to him like in a couple months. So this will kind of be the project for the next couple of weeks for my Thursday streams. So, um, Chloe Diamond, is that just like ink? Because I'm not, I didn't do not work with oil paints, but with ink. Uh, so no, this is permanent marker. So I guess it is kind of ink. Um, but this is only so I can see where what I'm doing when I'm painting. So I don't ever lose out the shape like of the dogs basically because I drew this out in pencil and I didn't prep it first which you should always prep before you start drawing on your canvas with the art lines and everything like that so that's what I should have done in the first place but I didn't so that was my bad but this kind of gives you an idea of where your paint strokes should go and you know you need to get around all of these different things because like I said this is the focal piece of the painting and these background things you should be dark and like dark over here because you don't want this to be all colorful these are empty spaces you don't want empty spaces to be colorful that's not what you are trying to make like it pop what you're supposed to make pop colorful and, and bright is actually the focal point of the piece so the background is supposed to be a very dark sort of shade any open spaces you don't really want in like these oil paintings so like I said um, it's a sort of like a, it's an interesting technique for for painters that's anything that they want to focus on everything around it is completely dark but yeah I think that's it for today guys um, and I will okay I'm gonna be recording all of the Harry Potter games with Abby tomorrow and I'll be trying to make like videos of that. Um, it will be pretty, pretty entertaining. Um, so yeah, and then Saturday in the afternoon, um, I'm not sure what I'm going to be streaming on Saturday, but it'll probably be something very chill that I haven't played in a while. I don't know, we'll oh, see. Not really in isolation. No, not playing any horror games on Saturday, I just want to chill. <laughs> So yeah, I will see you guys then and hope you have um, an enjoyable rest of uh, your Thursday evening and enjoy it tomorrow. I hope you guys have like a great um, rest of your week. Bye guys.